Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the CSUN Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This is a video tutorial that will demonstrate how to create Thiessen polygons, sometimes also called Voronoi diagrams. The point of creating the Thiessen polygons is to divide uh, a territory up into polygons that are have an equal distance between each of uh, the points. And so in this case, if we take a look at um, here, the San Fernando Valley, this is a point map of um, Home Depots and Lowe's, it's, uh, Home Improvement Centers, and in the background are uh, census tracts by population. And so what we might want to do is to ask ourselves, well, how many people live within the trade area around each of these home improvement centers? Well, how do you know what the trade area is? According to the logic of intervening opportunities that, uh, that go with that concept, that uh, customers uh, going to a Home Depot would not drive past one to get to the next. And so somewhere in between the two um, is where there would be a breakpoint distance and the customers will tend to drive to the closest one. So by putting these and polygons around each of these, it will create a breakpoint distance uh, equidistant between each of the points and all of its neighbors. It'll become more evident once you see it finished. So what do we do? Well, I notice that I have the analysis tab already activated. So click on tools and the geoprocessing window will appear and you just need to type in T-I-E-S-S-E-N for Thesen and this tool, Create These and Polygons, will appear. So click it once. It will ask for the input feature, and the input feature is, in this case, uh, Home Improvement Centers, and the output feature is going to be the These and Polygons. And so I want to save this somewhere in, uh, well, I'm going to put it in my um, default geo database. You put it where you can remember. And I'm going to call this uh, Thiessen Home Improvement 1. I'll click Save. And the output feature can be only the ID, which means it'll have no columns. But I want to keep all fields because there's some fields in the Home Depot Center columns of data that I want to keep, perhaps I want to keep something like um, sales volume. So this data is um, from the Esri's uh, business analyst data or, or perhaps the number of employees. So I want to keep that data. So I'm going to put all fields here. On this second window, what you want to do is you can, you can change the output coordinate if you want. And that uh, can be a, a challenge if these aren't all in the same coordinate system. So my suggestion is that you leave this blank for right now. The processing extent, if you leave it at default, it will extend about to where you see this red square a little bit less in, in this instance because I, I built this red square using a slightly different data set. Or you can tell it instead to make the processing extent how far it considers the um, the area under consideration to something larger like the San Fernando Valley trade area, which is the purple box. So it will make a larger square around these, these points in which it will consider the uh, trade area. So I'm going to click Run. And it shouldn't take very long. And there you have your thesis and polygons. So I'm going to just change this really quickly, the, the properties to no color, and maybe we'll change the, uh, we'll make them red. 
Okay, and so then um, now the last step in this process is to ask the software to do another join in which we ask the software what how many people perhaps live inside this. And so this calls back your skills in doing a spatial join, but we will quickly run through it in this assignment as well. So um, we're going to get uh, how many people live here and then their average income and then we'll make one more column um, which is going to be called purchasing power. So I'm going to right click uh, here on this the, my these and polygons and we're going to tell it to uh, do a spatial join for us. The join feature in this instance is going to be the census track. So now we're doing not points to polygons, but polygons to polygons. And let's give it uh, a name. I'll call mine Econ G join tracks. poly save um, we're going to do intersect and we're going to change the fields around let me maximize this so you can see what I'm doing we don't need a, a number of these fields so I'm going to get rid of uh, a number of them that I don't want. You can keep what you do want. I want sales volume and number of employees, for example. But a bunch of these are not useful to me in any way. So, um, and the same thing with the, these are now from name down, are getting into the census track data. I want to keep total population, but say I don't want any of these others so I'm going to just kill those all off until I only have median household income which is that column and we can get rid of uh, the rest and then um, what do we want for total population we want to keep the we want the sum of total population and for median household income, let's get the mean, the average median household income. What we're going to do at the end of this is multiply total population by the sum of population by the median household income mean. So that should work. Crush fingers. Click OK. And here we have our join. And Let's jump to symbology really quickly and say give us uh, just a graduated color just because we we don't want join count but the population 15 and this should be the sum of population in 15 and so this makes some sense here that we've got um, low population out here and lots of census tracts under consideration over here in the right so our bounding box has actually been is is sort of too big so that's a bit of a problem but it does tell us that this has worked correctly and so our last step is going to be and we'll open the attribute table and what we want to do this is we're going to scroll over here and we have the population column and the median income column and we want to uh, multiply those together and then divide them by you know 100,000 or something like that so we have something that is akin to purchasing power we want to know how many people are in these trade areas and then multiply that by their average income to get us an idea of how much money we're going to make at this store so once we have the attribute table open click add to add a field and then down here we will call 
perch power alias perch power uh, we want to make this um, let's just make it a float and make sure that it's a numeric value there you go decimal places we don't need many actually we need zero that's fine click OK and click Save come back over to our attribute table and over here at purchasing power we now have a new column full of null values so the last bit right click calculate field and this is a, a Python type expression builder so we want to let's um, double click on population and then multiply it by double click on median income and then Let's divide that by 100,000. And we could even go up to a million. That might make more sense. Let's do that. Click Apply. And there we have now a, a value that tells us which of these places have an excellent purchasing power. And what I'm going to do uh, to finish this up is to change uh, the symbology from population to purchasing power and because it's money let's change that and make it uh, you know sort of green for how much is the dough and so what this tells us here is that this store in Glendale if it captured all of this area would have uh, greater purchasing power uh, and that these two here have more purchasing power I should get rid of this And that this Lowe's here is, uh, should have some trouble. And certainly uh, this um, Home Depot um, Lowe's combo here fighting over space. Now uh, Home Depot in the orange has cannibalized its own, own business by locating too many other Home Depots nearby which cut into the business. So hopefully... Uh, you got all of that. That's the end of this tutorial.